Georgiou. I'm a journalist and trying to be writer who came to Virginia Woolf because um, I had thought a lot about the room of one's own concept and um, really needing a space to be able to write at least. Um, and then when I um, read to the lighthouse one summer, it's, it showed me a different side of um, Virginia Woolf, which was more about uh, family and consistency and how things change and the seasons change. And that's why I chose a piece today. Then indeed, peace had come. Messages of peace breathed from the sea to the shore. Never to break its sleep anymore, to lull it rather more deeply to rest. And whatever the dreamers dreamt holily, dreamt wisely to confirm. What else was it murmuring as Lily Briscoe laid her head on the pillow in the clean still room and heard the sea? Through the open window, the voice of the beauty of the world came murmuring, too softly to hear exactly what it said. But what mattered if the meaning were plain? Entreating the sleepers, the house was full again. Mrs. Beckwith was staying there, also Mr. Carmichael. If they would not actually come down to the beach itself, at least to lift the blind and look out, they would see then night flowing down in purple, his head crowned, his spectre jeweled, and how in his eyes a child might look. And if they still faltered, Lily was tired out with travelling and slept almost at once, but Mr. Carmichael read a book by candlelight. If they still said no, that it was vapour, this splendour of his, and the Jew had more power than he, and they preferred sleeping, gently then, without complaint or argument, the voice would sing its song. Gently the waves would break. Lily heard them in her sleep. Tenderly the light fell. It seemed to come through her eyelids. And it all looked, Mr. Carmichael thought, shutting his book, falling asleep much as it used to look. Indeed, the voice might resume, as the curtains of dark wrapped themselves over the house, over Mrs. Beckwith, Mr. Carmichael, and Lily Briscoe, so that they lay with several folds of blackness on their eyes. Why not accept this? Be content with this. Acquiesce and resign. The sigh of all the seas breaking in a measure around the isles soothed them. The night wrapped them, nothing broke their sleep, until the birds beginning and the dawn weaving their thin voices to its whiteness, a cart grinding, a dog somewhere barking, the sun lifted the curtains, broke the veil on their eyes, and Lily Briscoe stirring in her sleep. She clutched at her blankets as a faller clutches at the turf on the edge of a cliff, her eyes open wide. Here she was again, she thought, sitting bolt upright in bed, awake. Mm -hmm.